The tourbillon cage is one of the most critical sub-assemblies in a tourbillon watch movement because it supports all the parts of the escapement. In this video I make the tourbillon cage for the pocket watch project. It all begins with a piece of precision ground high carbon steel plate where the critical holes are drilled and the shape milled out on the pantograph. With a modern watch this would be done with CNC but traditionally this would be done with a piercing saw and files. I'm attempting to use my own methods in this watch which may or may not prove successful but they are based on the equipment available to me. One of the critical design requirements for the tourbillon cage is that it is balanced or poised. The entire cage will rotate when the watch movement is running and any imbalance in the cage would result in rate variation and potentially even stop the movement from running. However, when poising we must include every single component in the sub-assembly right down to the smallest screw. And this is one of the challenges because I haven't made these parts yet. So what I've done instead is modelled the movement in CAD and I've included the densities of all the parts in the model which allowed me to calculate the position of the centre of gravity. The detent is offset from the centre and this causes an imbalance if not corrected for in the cage and I've done that with the semicircular portion of the cage combined with the spoke and wobble in the right hand segment of the semicircle. Traditionally poise is achieved with a small weight screwed onto the cage but I'm assuming it was done this way to enable an experimental approach to poising. I'm hoping that I can simplify the cage design with my modelled method instead. The second important consideration in the design of the tourbillon cage is the mass. We want to minimise the inertia of the cage to reduce energy loss in the system. Initially I investigated using titanium for the cage to reduce its mass but since most of the cage weight is attributed to offsetting the escapement weight titanium didn't actually save much weight at all. I think it might be worth reconsidering in combination with a more symmetrical escapement such as a lever or coaxial. I tap the holes corresponding to the screw locations. These are all 0.6mm threads which are amongst the smallest typically used in a watch movement. When tapping small threads like this in tough steel it's important to take extreme care. I back off the tap regularly and use lots of cutting lubricant. A broken tap will almost certainly write off the part. These two central holes are opened and countersunk to accept two screws to attach the carriage pinion assembly which will mesh with the main train to drive its rotation. The bridge is made in much the same way as the bottom plate. The bridge I made in a previous video though is different to the bridge here. This one is smaller and sits underneath the bigger bridge. This smaller bridge will rotate with the rest of the cage whereas the larger bridge is fixed directly to the main plate. As I work through the finishing process I regularly clean the part in an ultrasonic bath to ensure details are not obscured by dirt and debris.
In a previous video I've talked about the best time to finish parts, and I've decided to apply a reasonable finish at this stage, and revisit later once I've proved the movement works. I use diamond suspension on a tin lap to remove the grinding marks and bring the parts of the cage to a rough polish. The bridge here requires countersunk holes to be formed, and I wasn't entirely satisfied by the previous approach you saw earlier in the video for the bottom plate, so I ground a D-bit from carbide instead, which worked much better. I'm very happy with the result. As with the bottom plate, the holes are carefully tapped, which will accept screws to secure the pivot, which will be made later as a separate component. These two plates are separated by pillars. They're machined from 1.5mm diameter silver steel. To allow me to tap closer to the bottom of the hole, I ground the tip off the 0.6mm tap, and this is something that you can do with larger taps too. Before removing the pillar from the lathe, I like to check the screw I made off camera will fit nicely into the threaded hole. I'm really happy with the fit of the thread, so I can proceed with confidence. It's also a good time to knock off the burr from the slitting saw on the screw. The rest of the pillar shape is formed, including necking the middle to reduce its mass. Since these pillars sit far away from the centre of rotation, a small reduction in mass can make a significant reduction to the moment of inertia.
I then reverse the pillars to cut the 0.6mm thread on the bottom of the pillars before finishing and checking final measurements with the watchmaker's micrometer. It was at this point that my trustworthy camera packed in, but thanks to our patrons I was able to buy a new one. So I've decided to break this video up into two parts, so you can enjoy part 2, where I make some of the smallest parts in the movement in Ultra HD. I will do my best to not keep you waiting too long for part 2. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.